A hundred dhoti clad young men sat cross legged on the floor in facing rows, chatting amongst themselves. At a sign from their teacher, the hall went quiet. Then they began the recitation. Without pause or error, entirely from memory, one side of the room intoned one line of the text, then the other side of the room answered with the next line. Bass and baritone voices filled the hall with sonorous prosody, every word distinctly heard, their right arms moving together to mark the pitch and accent. The effect was hypnotic, ancient sound reverberating to the room, saturating brain and body. After 20 minutes, they halted. It was just a demonstration. The full recitation of India's most ancient Sanskrit texts, the Shukla Yajurveda, takes six hours. Hindu Vedic Sanskrit pundits train for years to orally memorize and exactly recite several millennia old oral texts, ranging from 40,000 to over 100,000 words. Sanskrit tradition is the self-awareness of the interaction of language with cognitive experience. In addition to being sophisticated and scientific language, Sanskrit also lends itself to be used in many interesting ways. In Raghava Yadaviyam, Venkatadvari of 17th century narrates in a special method called Anuloma Viloma, the story of Rama and also of Krishna if read in reverse. 30 slokas read left to right are about Ramayana and read right to left are about Krishna bringing the Parijata tree from the heavens to the earth. In 1967, Alfred Tomatis, a French physician, psychologist and ear specialist, studied the effect of chanting on monks who had been part of tradition with strict schedule of daily chanting of up to 8 hours a day. When a new abbot changed this schedule, cutting out the chanting, the monks became tired and lethargic, even though they were getting extra sleep. In fact, the more sleep they got, the more tired they were. Alfred Tomatis believed that the chanting was energizing their brains and bodies. So he reintroduced the chanting and the monks were soon full of energy again. Sanskrit scholars in India learned to chant ancient texts from a tender age. They chant simple mantras, Sanskrit poetry and prose along with memorizing and chanting the most ancient Sanskrit texts including the Shukla Yajurveda which takes 6 hours to chant. While those listening to these chantings receive the gift of the sacred texts, the chanting of long texts does in fact have an amazing effect on the brain. Neuroscience shows how rigorous memorizing can help the brain. The term Sanskrit effect was coined by neuroscientist James Hartzell, who studied 21 professionally qualified Sanskrit pundits. He discovered that memorizing Vedic mantras increased the size of brain regions associated with cognitive function, including short and long-term memory. This finding corroborates the belief of Indian tradition which holds that memorizing and reciting mantras enhances memory and thinking. Sanskrit effect was also studied on a group of professionally qualified Yajurveda Pandits from Delhi region. Individuals with professional qualification as Yajurveda Pandits showed, among other findings, remarkably significant grey matter density and thickness increases in comparison with the control participants in key neuroautonomical regions associated with language and memory in some very interesting ways. Dr. Hartzell, a Sanskrit devotee and postdoctoral researcher at Spain's Basque Center on Cognition, Brain and Language, spent many years studying and translating Sanskrit and became fascinated by its impact on the brain. He noticed that the more Sanskrit he studied and translated, the better his verbal memory seemed to become. Fellow students and teachers often remarked on his ability to exactly repeat lecturers' own sentences when asking them questions in the class. Other translators of Sanskrit told him of similar cognitive shifts. India's Vedic Sanskrit pundits trained for years to orally memorize 
and exactly recite 3,000 year old texts ranging from 40,000 to over 100,000 words. He wanted to find out how such intense verbal memory training affects the physical structure of their brains. Dr. Hartzell's research is the first study to examine the brains of Sanskrit scholars using Structural Magnetic Resonance Imaging MRI at India's National Brain Research Center. They scanned the brains of 21 Sanskrit pundits and 21 control subjects. What he discovered from the structural MRI scanning was remarkable. Numerous regions in the brains of the pundits were dramatically larger than those of the controls, with over 10% more prey matter across both cerebral hemispheres and substantial increases in cortical thickness. Although the exact cellular underpinnings of brain matter and cortical thickness measures are still under investigation, increases in these metrics consistently correlate with enhanced cognitive function. He reports that the right hippocampus of the scholars, a region that plays a vital role in short-term and long-term memory and is specialized for patterns such as sound, spatial and visual patterns, had more brain matter than the brains of the controlled subjects. The right temporal cortex associated with speech prosody and voice identity was also substantially thicker. Dr. Hartzell's recent study raises the question of whether this kind of memorization of ancient texts could be helpful in reducing the devastating illness of Alzheimer's and other memory affecting diseases. Ayurvedic doctors from India suggest it is the case and future studies will be conducted along with more research into Sanskrit. While we all know the benefits of mindfulness and meditation practices, the findings of Dr. Hartzell are truly dramatic. In a world of shrinking attention spans, where we are flooded with information daily and children display a range of attention deficit disorders, even introducing small amounts of chanting and recitation could have an amazing effect on all our brains. Sanskrit is the only language in which sophisticated grammar principles in an algorithmic form were developed several millennia before time, the Astadhyayi, but also a suitable language for use in artificial intelligence and language. Despite its ancient origin, Sanskrit is useful in psychology and spirituality due to the enormous amount of highly intellectual and philosophical Vedic literature. Sanskrit is the stem of the vast tree of languages and it nourishes all Hindu languages wherever they may be geographically on the earth and nourishes the Hindu. The only surviving most ancient civilization and cultural heritage of the humanity of the world.